I've already taken a look at some of the cheap generic thermostats on eBay. I thought I'd find one that I think may be the one that many of these were cloned off because certainly it used to have the same sort of button there. I don't know if it, I don't know what the original one is, but this does seem to be a more upmarket one. And just taking a look in the back does suggest it really is a bit upmarket. So it's made by Elitech, leader of Asia market, STC-1000X. And it more or less has the same function. So let's zoom up in this and then I'll brighten the display up a bit. Like this. So we can see it better. Things notable about this one, uh, you can use the up arrow to see the set temperature and the down one to see the differential temperature. And I'll explain those in a moment. But to, before you can use any of these buttons, including the power button, if I press the power button down, you'll see a little, uh, the little padlock symbol flashes. Uh, you have to unlock things by holding this button until that little padlock disappears. Then when you press things like the power button, uh, after a time delay, it will turn the power off, but it will also display the little power symbol to show it is in a standby mode. You can either press and hold the power button again to turn it on again. This is just a, so you can turn a case off electronically, not actually completely. But if you kill the power, as I'm doing at the moment, uh, it does, just like the other ones, it does reset. It does a wee display test first. And then it displays, presumably that's version 1.2. I'm not sure why it's like an upside down A. So I'll show you how to set this. So at the moment, as it's powered up, the padlock mode is off for some reason. Oh, it's just gone on. Right, hold on. I shall press the padlock and show you the functionality. If you press the up button, there's a set temperature. If you press the down button, but you have to wait for it to revert back, uh, down button, there's the differential temperature. I'll explain that in a moment. If you want to change any settings, you have to press and hold the lock button again. It goes to F1 and then you can step up between F1 to F6. So F1, if I press this, is the temperature you want to set. If I press the power button to get back from that, and then I go up to F2 uh, and press the uh, maintenance button, the adjustment button, it displays the differential temperature. What this means is that around that 20 degrees Celsius, if you set the differential to three, it means that uh, the thermostat won't kick the heater in less, until it drops three degrees below uh, your set temperature of 20 degree in this case. And uh, in the case of the refrigeration mode, it won't actually activate the refrigeration until it's three degrees above that. It's called the hysteresis. It just gives an allowance. It stops it cycling too much. The next mode, F3, is the, let me just think, is the time delay for the compressor? Is it? Let me just grab the instructions here and give myself a quick refresher. Compressor start delay. So you can set that between uh, zero minutes and uh, 10 minutes. Typically, it would be set to say three. So I'll store that. What that means is that when the compressor, when it's calling for the compressor, it won't start immediately. It starts a little timer and the refrigeration symbol will flash for that time before it starts. This stops uh, the compressor if it's cycled too frequently, starting under load and uh, tripping out. The next mode, F4, is the temperature calibration. You can nudge it up and down uh, to, supposing the uh, you put an accurate calibrated ther therm thermostat in with the, uh, the probe that's in the unit, and you find a slight variation, you can fine-tune it so that this display will be accurate just by nudging the difference on, because it will vary between different thermistors. 10K thermistors, instead, that means at around about 25 degrees Celsius, they'll have a resistance of 10,000 ohms. Uh, F5 is uh, unusual for this one. You can toggle it between 1 and 0. If you toggle it to 1, it's Fahrenheit. If you tog toggle it to uh, 0, it's Celsius. That's quite a nice feature. I shall save that. And the final one is reserved, it says. This is interesting. It lets you choose an address, as if these are possibly on an address network. The default is one that says it's reserved, but it lets you choose one of 127 addresses, presumably a networking system, which should be quite useful. Let's store that. It's interesting to note that it does say to store the setting once you've adjusted it, you have to press the power button to actually do that. Uh, so let's go back out of this now, and I shall show you it kind of operating. Let's see if I can go out of it. Not tried this bit yet. 
or I could just leave it for a long enough time that it'll actually back out itself. Right, tell you what, I'll pause while it does that. One moment, please. The lock has kicked back in. So to demonstrate this, it's currently showing the little heat symbol, like a little sunburst, um, because it's below the 20 degrees Celsius. If I heat the thermistor up, uh, the temperature will rise until it cuts the heater off at 20. So it's approaching that now. It's cut it off. But as it goes beyond that, if it gets too high, when it gets to 23, you'll see, well, in this case, the, uh, the heater came on, the compressor came on immediately. It didn't use that time delay. That's odd. Did I set that to zero or something like that? Or was it just because that time has already expired? But uh, likewise, now, once it comes on at that 23 degrees, degrees Celsius, that's your set temperature plus the differential. Once it comes down below that, it will then sort of cut back off. OK, so let's take it to bits. So I shall zoom back out again. I shall adjust the exposure so it's non-glary. And I shall turn the power off. This is a 240 volt one. Well, it's a 220 volt one. It's not getting smoking hot on 240. First thing I know is that there's no cover over the back, like some of the other ones do. Uh, it's direct connection to the terminals. You can put the screwdriver through these plastic holes here into the terminals. Um, I don't need to take the wires out of this. I will take the wires out. It's rising clamp terminals. That instantly wins at points. That means it's a better quality terminal that is better suited to technical use because the cheap, nasty terminals that just crush a little metal leaf down on with a screw are not very good. These ones, as you actually undo the screw, the cage physically opens up and it grips the wires nice and tight. The other terminals, uh, one niggle I've got here, actually. This is live, this is neutral, and then there's the thermistor right next to them. See what the spacing's like in the back, but at least they've put it next to the neutral connection, which should be at roughly earth potential. These other two are just the relay contacts for the... Um, this one is for the heating, and this one is for the cooling. So this could be possibly a heater, and this one could either be a fan or it could be a compressor. OK, usual approach here, I think, that if you have these little side catches that when you actually put it into a panel, uh, you slide these up and they lock it into place. But you press this and slide it off to get it open. I'm wondering how easy this is going to be to get open. I shall find out in a moment. I've not had it open yet. I'm going to have to slit the label here because uh, it's got one of those little sort of warranty-ish labels that just basically goes across here, presumably to stop you opening it easily. I think I'm going to have to peel that off completely because there's little clips under there. The bastards, really. They don't want us in here, do they? Let's try levering this off. Is it going to be one of those ones that as soon as you lever one off, the other one pops back in? It is. That's extra annoying. Oh, <laughs> they're all clipping back in. Yeah, I think I prefer the other one for opening. But we'll see how we go on. If it takes too long, I shall just uh, pause momentarily while I try and get it off. This is uh, working out okay so far. It's off. These felt strangely... Oh it's, a big, oh, it's a squishy rubber membrane behind the buttons. The display is much more complex than this one. Oh, look at that. Oh. Things that it doesn't show. It's got a fan display, it's got the freezing, it's got what looks like defrost, it's got the heating, but actually looks more like a lighting symbol, it's got the lock, it's got a warning signal, it's got AUGS auxiliary here, it's got a, a network symbol, it's got a power symbol, it's got a little leaf, that's the eco symbol probably. Spanner to show when it's uh, in program mode, it's got the relative humidity display as well here, option for a... Uh, Humidistat and degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. OK, let's slide this out. Is this going to come out? I'll push it from the back. It's coming out. So first thing I notice here, and it's a big thing, is that the transformer is a split core transformer. Let's take a look at those terminals. They have anti-tracking slots and they have 
got a relative amount of space there. Is that one of my beard hairs or is that someone else's beard hair? Uh, but they've got the anti-tracking slots, fairly narrow things, so it's not a huge issue having the uh, live and neutral next to this. The live and neutral are going directly to the transformer. It's probably got a thermal fuse in it, unless it's just got such a high impedance. It uh, has that protection, internal impedance protection against a short circuit in the secondary side. I right, tell you what, I shall, it's quite cramped here, but I shall try and take a picture of what's down here and then we can explore it. One moment, please. I wasn't going to go too deep in this, but I did. So I've reverse engineered most of the circuitry and let's explore it. So we've got the transformer here, just a traditional uh, transformer, split bobbin transformer, where we've got the mains voltage side on this side and it is completely isolated. I wish modern transformers, I wish the switch mode ones did this, but they always wind the windings on top of each other for greater efficiency or better magnetic coupling. But in the old days, with these transformers, which are super reliable, we've got the primary side and we've got the uh, secondary side and there is physical plastic between them. So safe. That goes to a direct fire. Big, fat, smoothing capacitor. The capacitor has to be quite high value, 1,000 megafarad in this instance, because uh, it's dealing, instead of dealing with like 20 or 30,000 hertz from a little switching supply, in this case, it's just dealing with 100 or 120 hertz. So it needs to be a bit of a higher value for that ripple. The upside of that is it's a bigger capacitor. It's much less stressed. This capacitor is probably not going to fail anytime soon. Decoupling capacitor, another decoupling capacitor, a 5 volt uh, regulator down here, and then another 100 microfarad capacitor just for that 5 volt supply. Uh, one, two, three transistors, uh, one for the relays, uh, one for each relay, and one for this sounder. And then this little thing that looks like a transistor here is a double diode package. It's the snubber network across these diodes to shunt that back EMF spike. On the back circuit board itself, which is just skewed up at an angle here. There is the processor in there. Four transistors. These are the display driver transistors, which are used in conjunction with these resistors here, which are driving the segments, but these switch the individual di digits. This circuitry over here uh, is not implemented, but I know what it is. I reverse engineered it. Um, it's the serial network is in place in this, but they've not actually put it in. Uh, this resistor down here, 1K, and this capacitor down here are part of the divider network for the thermistor input, the 10K thermistor. Let me bring in the schematic. I shall tame this down a little bit before I bring this in because otherwise it's going to be quite ferocious. I don't know if that tamed down much. I don't think it tamed down. No, it didn't really tame down much. This is the wrong page. One moment, please. That's what I get for making a last minute edition. Max 485 is the last minute edition. So here is your, well, 220 volt, it says, but 220 to 240 volt. There is the traditional transformer. The secondary, which is about 12 volts, is going into the bridge rectifier and coming out and being smoothed by that big fat uh, 1000 megafarad capacitor, 25 volt. The relay coils, uh, they might be 15 volts. Certainly when they're powered, the voltage, whatever it floats up to here, it drops down to 14 volts when one of these is powered, which is the bit that matters. Uh, if it floats up too high, it puts a little bit of strain on the voltage regulator, but uh, the main thing is for the relay coils, I suppose. The relay coils have the little back EMF diode, uh, which are both in a single three-pin package. There are transistors to switch those relay coils. Then there's the voltage regulator with its decoupling capacitors, puts out the 5 volts. Uh, there's the 100 megafarad smoothing capacitor. There's the sounder, which is in the 5 volt rail, and then a transistor to switch that. And then we go over to the next page. I've abbreviated this because it would be a very, very busy drawing otherwise. There are, it, the display itself, it's not got any solder pins on it because it's just heat staked directly onto the circuit board because this panel in the front is just a light guide. There are LEDs on the circuit board which could either be basically a bare chip mounted in the board with a pad next to it like that with a wee bond wire across or is more likely in these cases uh, to be just a little surface mount chip soldered at both ends but a really tiny one for each segment here. The segments will probably be tapered in there. 
coming up to a sort of narrower thing just so, you know, it's a light guide basically and it just has to cup over that LED. But the LED displays, each of the four displays has its own PNP transistor pulling it up to the positive rail and then the microcontrollers driving via resistors the uh, negatives of the LEDs directly but there are actually about 12 because it's not just the four digits it's driving it's also driving clusters of about four of these uh, symbols. Um, the relays there'll just be resistors going out to the relays for the uh, the transistors for the relays. The buttons are all common to the positive rails, so just feeding straight down to the microcontroller as far as I can see. And I expected the thermistor just to have a divider. There's a 1K resistor, uh, and then going to out to the thermistor. I, would, I thought that was going to be from the 5 volt supply, but it looks as though it might be from the microcontroller. Maybe it's got a uh, regulated output there. But that has a decoupling capacitor across it to remove any transients just to give a stable feedback from the thermistor and then a resistor going back up to the microcontroller to actually read it that's the circuitry i think is in there it's all a bit cramped uh, i didn't want to start stripping this thing to bits because it would break it and i quite like it the bit that's missing over at this side uh, is the network and we've got the two lines of the rs485 network i presume some transient suppressors going down to the uh, zero volt rail to protect the circuitry. A couple of resistors going up to what looks like an Max 485 uh, RS485 receiver. Uh, possibly bi-directional, so you can send a signal and it'll send the temperature back. That would kind of make sense. Uh, and that is then, well, the circuitry is not there. It will be heading over to the microcontroller. It's all fairly, it's all fairly logical as these things are. Uh, damn, I wish it took as little time to explain the circuitry as it did to reverse engineer it, but it doesn't. But the upshot is, it's uh, very neat. I like this custom display with all its little graphics. It is, the, even the seven segments, they're curved. It's very stylish. It really is completely custom. Uh, as is the front panel, is looking a lot more stylish than the traditional ones with its smoked bezel for a good contrast and these uh, stylish chevron buttons. Very neat. So I don't know the history of these. I don't know if the other one, it, if the others are cloned off this or if this is just an upmarket version of a standard style of unit. But uh, it definitely seems quite good. I like that transformer. That is a significant factor in reliability. But that's about it. So uh, yes, the Elitech. STC-1000X, it looks quite a smart unit. It looks nicely made inside, electrical separation is good. Uh, there's proper, they've beefed up the tracks and the circuit board. It looks like the uh, the relays are kind of custom made for, for them for this application. And it's got loads of anti-track slots between these for electrical separation from all the circuitry. Even uh, where, like, when the oddity of the temperature sensor going in next to the... Uh, next to the mains, but it does have that separation and they have chosen for the neutral to be there, which is more or less ground potential normally. But yeah, it looks a sensible design, quite a smart thermostat.